Hello, I'm with the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, and I'm going to be talking about a preparedness project that we've been doing in Indonesia. So we wanted to figure out what would it take to map an entire country for exposure. Uh, exposure is a part of risk modeling. So that's people, where they live, and things like that. And you combine that with hazard, um, like if an earthquake were to happen or a volcanic eruption, and come up with the actual risk. So in our pilot over the past six months, as you can see from this map, we've been a little bit all over. Indonesia has over 17,000 islands. We've only visited about 10 of them. But we've done um, um, a variety of workshops. So the first thing we had to determine was what information we were going to collect about buildings. So here are our five attributes. We went from uh, typical surveys that included 50 different variables and said to civil engineers, you get five. Um, the one that we weren't too sure about was actual structural information. Could um, your average person collect that information and could it be used effectively for risk modeling? So the first way we encouraged people to map is we had a university competition. Basically, we had workshops in five universities and said, let's see who can map the most buildings. Um, we gave people five points for a building and one point for anything else. Um, and we started a website, Competici OSM. So our competition website, um, we used it in some ways to direct the crowd a little bit. If there were mistakes happening, we would do blog posts saying, well, maybe you want to map the buildings this way or categorize roads a little bit differently. And here are the winners. Uh, the prize was to go to Phosphor G in uh, Denver, Colorado, which is the open source geospatial conference. And it, what was uh, hopefully good as far as continuing our work there is meeting the international mapping community and seeing that there was more than just goes on in Indonesia. So our second part was in rural communities, working with groups doing hand-drawn maps and poverty mapping. Uh, so they go from hand-drawn maps to uh, illustration like this one. This illustration was done in Corel Draw, so it has no geospatial component, no concept of latitude and longitude. So it's difficult to use for other tasks. So we wanted to move it to OpenStreetMap, where along with still having the information these communities want to collect about themselves, having a geospatial component so you can do other things with it. So in going from there, um, we did a lot of workshops in uh, rural areas. Um, our process changed greatly from the beginning to the end. Um, I'd previously worked in Haiti, for example, and then much in the United States. Well, people here were very used to drawing maps, but not as used to computers. Uh, so um, it was just working through the tools and figuring out the best way. Um, primarily for data collection, we used walking papers. People were already used to drawing maps, so the idea of printing a map and drawing on it, and then taking a picture and putting it in an editor uh, was fairly natural. So uh, this is an example of the first 15 buildings we ever collected here in the editor as we were adding them. So once we uh, had everyone trained, we went out and did a, a lot of mapping. Um, we intensively mapped two villages uh, to see how the process would work. Because uh, remember, this is a pilot, so we're looking to see how we can expand it and trying different things. Uh, primarily uh, by Moto. Um, these were uh, places where uh, you could actually map a fair amount of buildings if one person was driving and the other person is writing the attribute information down. So along with this mapping, though, we were really trying to make things culturally relevant. If you look at the icons in OpenStreetMap, they ma totally make sense if you're from the United Kingdom. They slightly make sense if you're from the United States, and they do not make sense if you're from Indonesia. So we are working on coming up with custom icon iconography and working with the communities. Additionally, we've translated uh, the Java OpenStreetMap in, uh, editor into Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, this was done by two of our interns. Uh, it's about 65% done, minus those crazy error messages that no one knows what they are. Uh, and then to bring in the international community, we built a tasking manager. So if there is a disaster, we can gain new imagery and say, help us update it uh, from the base data. 
So in the past six months, here we are. Uh, it's actually 48,000 buildings that are mapped. I should have rechecked the statistics before I made this slide. And it's been used in a disaster planning exercise. So from all of this data collection, you get a risk model. This is a tsunami risk model in uh, Mount Mary. Uh, and you can see the building footprints that have been collected and then the risk of uh, an event does happen. Thank you very much. <laughs>